Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Jeff Norcott backstage. You all all right? Yeah. Good, good. Listen, I am too tight to have a support act, so, yeah, it's very sad. But I, I just need to make sure you're in a good mood before I come on, because I was at King's Lynn the other day, I walked out and no one gave a shit, so, good. All right, it sounds like you're in shape. Let's get the show started. Please welcome Jeff Norcott. <laughs>
drinking your masculinity, see? <laughs> drinking wine. Anyone out there? Men drinking wine? Give me a cheer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the only southerner. I think you misread the room, Steve. <laughs> drinking wine, I suspect, but they've just uh, been bred in the north, mate, you know, they've, not, they've, they've got to suppress all that stuff, you know what I mean, they've got to suppress all that. I mean, you know, people talk about men suppressing feelings, there's a lot of talk, isn't there, men got to talk about their feelings more. What if us suppressing our feelings is just genetic, you know, it comes from our hunter-gatherer past, because, you know, if you went away, if you went away with a few lads on a hunting mission, you know, you, you would have to you'd have to keep some stuff down, because you don't want to be like a weak link within the group, you know, you're just sitting there around the campfire, a couple of lads, a few miles away from home, one of them looks a bit intense, keeps sharpening his dagger. <laughs> you know, you're not going to sit there and go, oh, anyone else got really hard skin on their feet? <laughs> you know, I was just thinking, tomorrow, obviously we've got a hunt, but if you see a pumice stone, pick it up, for God's sake. It's frankly getting out of hand, you know. Any men drinking whiskey? Yeah. <laughs> now, is that something you've recently got into? No. Oh, I know. Sounds, sounds dark. You know, it's been a lifelong affliction. <laughs> What's happening with me, mate, is um, how old are you? 54. 54. There's a weird thing happening with me, boss, is that a lot of my mates, as they go into their late 40s, they've suddenly become whiskey guys. And I'm like, yeah, I do like a good whiskey, Jeff. Yeah, I don't mind. Uh, do, I do like a single malt. Yeah, I do like a good single malt. Because I like the sort of smoky, barrelly, oaky fucking. <laughs> oh, sorry, Steve. Do you think you're a connoisseur? Because you ain't a connoisseur of nothing, mate. You once drank a whole pint with a fag butt in, didn't even realise. <laughs> I think what's happened is you realise you're an alcoholic and you're trying to make it sound like a hobby. Because <laughs> it's weird with alcohol, isn't it? I mean, in many ways, it's a brilliant drug. Because like, if you like it, you can get lost in the way that it's manufactured. You can talk about it quite lovingly. You know? If you like gin, people start talking about the botanicals. Or if you like wine, you go, yeah, this wine is so incredible because trampled by the fattest number in France. <laughs> or, I don't know, something like that, right? You can't do that with any other drug, can you? Like, if you're really into cocaine, you can't pull out a little bag and go, see how flaky that is? <laughs> yeah, that's because it was smuggled in the stomach of a pregnant Guatemalan. <laughs> okay, that little joke was a test, and I've got to be honest, I'm going to have to work on some of you a little bit there. It was, it was a bit sooner, you know, that was a bit fucking bleak, Jeff. Yeah, it was. But it's just a test, now I know, don't I? Now I know. I heard... Um, I uh, went and did a meeting recently and trying to get a sitcom commission. And uh, I'm one of those blokes, you know, I don't deliberately set out to offend people, but sometimes I just say stuff and people take it the wrong way. Like I, I was in this meeting and uh, they said to us, Jeff, we like your sitcom idea, but what we're going to do is we're just going to we're just gonna show a couple of scenes to the channel, you know, to get an interest in it. And I went, oh yeah, I like it. Yeah, show a bit of me. And, um, <laughs> the mood soured somewhat after that, must be said. And I come out of my agent, I said, what happened there, Sophie? I said, I felt like we had them. She said, well, we did. But you said that thing about showing a bit of leg. I was like, yeah. She said, well, it sort of implied that you think seeing a bit of a woman's leg is a good thing. I was like, I do. <laughs> That's why I said it. That's why the phrase fucking exists. It's awesome. I can't really do the male equivalent, can I? Well, let's show a big, fat, hairy man shin. It's not really the same, is it? Or just show some bonnet cleavage. It's not. <laughs> We're living in a weird time, aren't we, where we're not just trying to solve social justice issues of right now, we're trying to sort out everything from the past. I was on a, a Radio 4 panel chat thing recently, and there was a, there was a feminist, feminist academic on, because uh, it usually is. Um, <laughs> some of the men you don't know, do you? You don't know. Your wife's looking at you, is this funny to you? Is this funny? <laughs> That's what you like. And um, she, she made a good point. She said, right, you know, in the same way we teach about the history of things like racism, we've also got to teach about the history of sexism in this country. I thought, okay, interesting point. And then she went, and what we really need is fathers like Mr. Norcott to back that up in the home. I was like, whoa, 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 where, the fuck, where did that come from? I don't know what kind of dad she thinks I am. You know, like, if my wife brings my son in a sandwich, I go, all right, son, mummy bought you a sandwich. What did you say? That's right, nothing. And stare her out, go on, stare her out. Make her doubt herself, son. This is how we establish control. You know? I'm terrified of my wife, that's not who I am. But I, um, you know, I, 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 I think it's a weird time, isn't it? Because, on the one hand, at schools, you know, if you've got uh, kids at school or grandparents, he said, covering the demographic. Um, <laughs> 
Well, you've got all the fucking money. You can take a joke. <laughs> the boomers. You're going to fucking another Viking River cruise next week. Don't give me shit. Exactly. Enjoy it. <laughs> I am. Uh, it's just a weird time, isn't it? Because you've got to teach your kids about some fairly heavy duty things from our, our, you know, very dark stuff from the past. But on the other hand, if you look at things like television, there's so many like uh, trigger warnings and stuff like that. Trigger warnings. I mean, they're so weird. They say things like, well, on, the, on this on tonight's show, there will be scenes of drugs, violence, and an intense sexual nature. You're like, that's what I'm watching then. <laughs> Get out of the way, you nerd. You're spoiling the fun, man. It's not a show like Casualty on tonight's Casualty. It's called Casualty. I'm guessing someone gets fucked up. <laughs> on tonight's Casualty, a geezer falls off a ladder. And if you've ever fallen off a ladder, there's a phone number at the end. <laughs> if, you, if you identify the ladder, then <laughs> just... You know, it's kind of weird, isn't it? Because they think, oh, if we teach all these kids about all this bad stuff from the past, they'll naturally have a socially progressive reaction. They might do, but what if they don't, you know? What if I tell my son about sexism from the past and he's just a little chauvinist waiting to happen, right? <laughs> uh, son, uh, in the past, men basically, they used to run the show, women are sort of like second class citizens. What if he was like, good old days, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, son, no, I can't say that. Right? It was bad, son, it was bad. Come on, dad, we've done it once, we can do it again. <laughs> Look, she's in the fucking house, mate, you are. You're playing with fire. No, you have to understand stuff. You have to understand it's bad in the past. We used to objectify women openly in mass media on page three of tabloid newspapers. We used to have women with their tops off and I miss it. I mean, I do miss it, but maybe you say not to miss it, but that's not the same as not realizing it was wrong, okay? And now it's gone, we got rid of that quite rightly and all we have now is hardcore pornography all day, every day on the internet. So there you go. That, my little friend, is progress. <laughs> I'm not sure you're ever going to fully get past the fact that, that women's bodies have a lot of power and, and draw over men. You know, that's always been around, right? Like if I, say for example, if I'm having an argument with my wife, right? I'm really angry with her. And then she just walks over and presses her breasts into my face. I'm going to, that's going to placate me somewhat, I would say, you know? I'll say, you know what? I sort of see where you're coming from, actually. <laughs> when you put it like that. Huh? Now. The other way round, I'm not sure it'd be quite as effective. <laughs> you know? My wife's furious with me, I go, <laughs> I think I know what this needs. <laughs> I dare say it might inflame the situation. <laughs> and I'll do the basic blow through of the show in the second half. I just thought we had to talk a bit of politics in the first half. There's so much going on. Not least, I mean, not, I'll get onto here in a minute, but in the States, did you see that thing with Biden? Where they cut, there's a report come out and they've discovered that he's old. <laughs> Fucking bombshell that is. Did they just realise? Yeah, what was it? There was a really damning phrase in it. They said he's a, he's a kindly elderly man with a terrible memory. That is, I don't know why, but that's somehow worse than being a piece of shit with dog. That's just so much more damning. You know, more, it's like going, bless. He's a nice guy. He's a, you know, he's a walking Werther's original. He's... I mean, Donald Trump is a piece of shit, but he's fucking good at it, isn't he? He's got it down to a, he's got it down to a fine art. Did you see that photo of him when he got arrested? Like, did he do that in one take? That's an incredible photograph. Look, I think he's an arsehole, but maybe he wants it in others. Maybe just give it to him. Give him another go. <laughs> Joe Biden, if you tried to get him to do that photo, he'd be looking the wrong way. He'd be like, no, Joe, you know when you're trying to get a baby to look at the camera? Joe, Joe, this way. Joe Biden is so old, right? He's the first president in history that you could assassinate just by not gritting the outside of the White House. He's... <laughs> and the thing is, is Trump, Trump himself, Trump's, Trump's not young. He's just not as old as Joe, if anything, technically. Trump should be the choice for the Gen Zs, because he's both a younger man and technically a person of colour. He is. <laughs> when you think about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just, I, I don't know, look, I'm gonna say this, and maybe this is a bit sexist against men, but I don't think past a certain age, men should be in politics. I really don't. I think women are still sharp as they get older. 
it's less common with men, isn't it? You just think, like Joe Biden is 81, isn't he? Just think of men you, you know at that age, men in the family. You wouldn't trust them with a shopping list, let's be honest. <laughs> you know, Christmas, you know, trying to teach them Uno. <laughs> How upset they got. I just think the moment, you know those little pill boxes with the letters of the days of the week on? I think once one single compartment could fit a shoe in it, I think. Because <laughs> Joe, he just, I, look, I, I think he's actually, look, for his age and with what I think is going on with him mentally, I think he's actually doing a pretty good job, given that. But it must be hard, it's almost cruel, really, because, what, you know, he doesn't know shit from clay, does he? I'm best of both, right? There's a phrase Steve will recognise. <laughs> You know, like, when he's at a World Leaders Summit, because he's known so many different... Do you know Bill Clinton, who was president in the 90s, is still younger than Joe Biden is now? <laughs> it's fucking incredible how old he is. So the wonder he gets confused, especially when there's a prime minister, a world leader as small as Rishi Sunak knocking around, yeah. right? He must be like, did I, did I, is there one single little small boy running around? I swear to God, a little small boy running around. Little Asian boy. I could have been a Mexican. I don't know. It's kind of ambiguous, really. I might snip his hair. Watch out. He's done enough. Rishi is so small. People talk about Rishi's height. I think it's like his general smallness. I think he's just, just really little, you know. It's not like the Prime Minister just one junior apprentice, isn't it? Like, <laughs> he's, he brought back David Cameron as well. I thought, when you're that small, don't bring back someone that big. You look like bring your dad to work, Dave. It's fucking weird. You can think, whatever you say about Cameron, at least he could go on all the rides at Alton Towers. He's a little fucking hell, they tried to bring Liz, well, Liz Truss keeps trying to bring herself back. Has she forgotten that she was Liz Truss? Like, that's the only explanation that she's forgotten. I, I mean, I sometimes wonder if that even happened. Do you think, no, Liz Truss thing? Is it like some weird holiday romance? You know, I think, did it even happen? Now, look at my mortgage and go, yeah, it happened. <laughs> she, I mean, it's too soon is the main thing. It's like Liz, too soon. It'd be, it'd be like if they put Hugh Edwards on the next series of Mars Singer, isn't it? Oh. You know, take it off. Take, no, fucking put it back on, Hugh. That is too soon, bro. You've got to go in the celebrity jungle or something, bro. You can't just come straight back. You've got to talk about depression with someone from Steps. You really bridled at the Hugh Edwards thing. I know that you... Look, I loved him as a broadcaster too. I mean him and Phil Schofield. I think that, I'll say this about Philip Schofield, at least Phil left us with a handy phrase, right? Unwise, but not illegal. <laughs> well, well done, Phil. Not illegal, the entry level requirement for all human conduct. You didn't break the law, you smashed it. Well done, Phil. I, mean, I suspect that in hundreds of years, there'll still be men using that phrase. I don't know, babe, 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 babe. No, no, babe, don't be angry. What I did was unwise, but was it illegal? <laughs> in the country we were in at that time. That's how I understand it. It's now punishable by death. You know, and it was a weird, it was weird. It was a weird year last year because obviously we had these national treasured broadcasters in their late 50s that have evidently got sexual interest in people in their late teens. And I should be clear that I'm not for one second saying that either of those men are paedophiles. No, they had the good sense to show a bit of patience. <laughs> yeah, somehow that didn't win Joe at the Edinburgh Fringe. I... You, you know what's good about that, Joe? Is normally I wonder, are they not going to like that? I already knew you weren't going to like that. that was, you gave me a fair fucking heads up. I don't know what the politics is. What is it, what is surely like politics wise? Are you, because you don't know about time to like, Towns like this, you look at all the like free Palestine protests, a lot of them are people that are retired and stuff, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I mean, some of you are young. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is the politics here? What, what's your MP? Lindsay Hoyle. Lindsay Hoyle. Lindsay Hoyle. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, that's the only job. I think you're a your constituent. Is that the only job of being speaker? I don't know about you, but I want to hear it. Anyone want to talk to me, eh? You shut the fuck up. You, you basically just off 
for an hour, a whole room of people. You should have put fucking come on, you know. You know, you have had enough of you, you know, shit. Yeah. Welcome to Chorley. Okay, I'm starting to understand now. What a strange bunch of celebrities you have. Boys own and Lindsay Oil. Where the fuck does that Venn diagram come from? So, what do you think about Lindsay Oil? Are you proud that he's your guy and stuff? Yeah. It's a high profile guy. You like him? Alright, so all right, I can't say anything about Hugh Edwards. <laughs> Lindsay Hoyle. Oh, oh God. <laughs> okay, I didn't mean to start a fight here. I get the impression I get the impression it's normally quite gentle here. I'm coming there. Right, listen, no, I mean I, I look, I think the thing with uh, with Rishi, is it, it was a hospital pass to begin with, you know, it's not really haven't really got any cards left that he can play. I suppose I suppose he could play the race card. And I'll allow for a moment of discomfort there because, um, well, I'm not racist, but apparently I looked like I might have dabbed. It's fresh from the cenotaph, eh? Some of you aren't sure this is an interesting thing. I knew there was a risk coming tonight. I, no, I'm just saying. Look, it's politics, it's cynical, but young people, they're terrified of being seen to be racist. I'm just saying, political attack ads, you've got to go base. Oh, weaponize that fear. That's what I do, I'd have an attack ad on the left hand side, Keir Starmer, right? On the right, Rishi Sunak, and I go, the election, general election, you've got the first chance for the first time in British history to vote for a Prime Minister of Colour. Are you going to vote for the 60 year old white guy? Hmm. I think there's a word for that. Vote Labour, vote racist. That's what I'd say. It's really cynical. I'm not saying it's, I'm just saying you've got to do the diversity thing. That's what the young people like. I'd say, have we got any lesbians? That's what I'll be doing, any lesbians. Ruth Davidson, I know you're retired, but get warmed up, love you coming on. We've got any black blokes. So do we have any black blokes? Hey, yeah, what's the quiet thing? thing? Mm, we've got any alternatives? <laughs> it's gonna be Labour, right? It's gonna be Labour, and that doesn't terrify me in the way that it once did, but I do I wish they'd have to do something active to win it. Yeah. <laughs> Rather than it's all be handed to them like some sort of surprise inheritance of a mad uncle, you know? <laughs> With syphilis. Because <laughs> that's what's happened, isn't it? The Tories and the SNP, they've basically imploded and destroyed themselves and each other. And it, all of which reminds me of the final scene of Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, right? <laughs> Carnage everywhere, but in the middle is Keir Starmer with a couple of bags going, if I'm not mistaken, I'll put her in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I don't policies. His fucking voice, man. Look, I know that these are superficial things, but this is how we react to politicians as humans. His voice. Like, like he starts talking, I think, right, this guy's gonna be, he's gonna be Prime Minister. I should find out more about him. Where's he coming from? And he's like, and because he's not like actually committing to any policies, if anything, he's going the other way. You know, the only thing he does say, I don't want direct public prosecutions. Yeah, we know. You say it every time, it's like Uncle Albert going, during the war, they'll point that we fucking know, mate. It's so boring. And I know that some of you might say, well, we had a charismatic Prime Minister, Jeff, in Boris Johnson, and look what happened there. And I think, you know, it's a fair point. But on the other hand, it does feel like we're going all the way to the other side. I mean, Keir Starmer, he is, I mean, he's the human manifestation of Nando's lemon and herb, isn't he? He's I mean, a sort of decaffeinated tea bag on legs. He's... <laughs> He's the kind of guy that'll go on an Amsterdam stag do and actually see a museum, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Some of the more liberal ones are going, what's wrong with that? Ev everything is wrong with that. Why everything? <laughs> what's it like? Are, 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 are Lib Dems a force here? I mean, the word Lib Dems and force was weird. Any Lib Dems in? That's the problem, isn't it? <laughs> you know, the government, everyone hates, you've got an opposition that no one's sure about, but the Lib Dems still can't get a fucking look in. No one knows anything about them. I mean, Ed Davey, I don't even know what he sounds like. I don't think many people do, you know? I could do an impression of him right now, you wouldn't even know if it was good. I mean, I'll do it, I'll do it. I'll just do, hello, I'm Ed Davey. <laughs> Are you the leader of a Liberal Democrat? <laughs> You want to see on my knee? I just, and he's, he's, no, he's not done anything like that. I just, because the Lib Dems have got this thing where they can win all these by-elections by going around and saying whatever they want because no one knows if that's their actual policy. 
They just go around and go, yeah, we the Liberal Democrats in this area, we want to build houses. And he's like, we don't want new houses. They're like, yeah, that's what I said, no houses. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. Uh, that's <laughs> stupid. <laughs> just went and flooded that construction site. <laughs> I mean, the only thing that I have particularly enjoyed in the last year or so is uh, been the implosion of the SNP. That's been a... Uh, couldn't have happened to a nicer party, really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they've been left with this guy, Hamza Yusuf, if you've seen him. I almost feel sorry for him. He's just a muppet. Like, he, he's like one of those guys that went for a promotion but sort of immediately regretted it, you know? <laughs> and he's got this ability to just say stupid things. He, uh, had a, there, he was at a refuge with loads of Ukrainian women. And he's looking around going, oh, it's all the women in there. Where, where, where are all the men? <laughs> and they are fighting war. And he's like, yeah, that'll be it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, they were. Whatever you think about the SNP, when they won all those seats, right, in 2015, they were different, weren't they? They were disruptors. They come down on that train. You know, ready to fuck shit up your mate. And they say, you go to West Moors Park. Ah. And fuck shit up, mate. Ah. Right? You know, okay, well, this is something different, but you know, nine years later, they're just part of the furniture, really. You know, they've, uh, I've noticed that just to try and emphasise their Scottishness back home, they've started throwing in these weird parochial Scottish phrases. <laughs> it's weird, like the PMQs that stand up and go, well, I just want to say to the minister in response to his points about GDP, hey, we have a. We have a wee phrase back in my constituency of uh, my dunk and all the papoos that we do. We say, <laughs> we, we say you can't take a sheep for a sheep, and if it doesn't have any wool, you're like, who the fuck? I don't think anybody says that in Scotland. You try to win votes off groundskeeper William, Mrs. Dalton. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? It's weird because I think, like, I'm sure I've got a lot of my lefty friends here tonight, right? And I, I think that. When the Tories get voted out, you'll, you'll enjoy it, right? Yeah? Yeah. You know? Who are you looking forward to losing their job most? Who's going to be the Michael Portillo one? Reese. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I reckon he'll still fucking try and argue that he hasn't lost somehow. Yeah. No, actually, I think I'm fine. <laughs> Even though I lost by 10,000 votes, that's actually a victory. <laughs> if you look at the principle of the Magna Carta. <laughs> I don't even know. I've never done an impression of him before. What fucking arrogance to just think, oh, I'll just fucking improvise one out. <laughs> hey, Steve, that's what we do, Cockneys. I'll fucking give it a go, mate. <laughs> but, you know, I don't think Labour, even if you are left-wing, particularly if you're progressive, like, I don't think Labour are going to do any of the sort of, like, uh, radical stuff. They're not going to reform judge laws, are they? But if you thought if that was going to happen, that would have happened under Boris Johnson, right? <laughs> This guy's version of after eight to probably come with a straw. Mm. <laughs> I, but it's weird, isn't it? Because like the British public are actually more liberal than either of the two main parties when it comes to judge law. Most people do want some sort of reform. But on the other hand, we're a bit more conservative, certainly in the small C things, when it comes to the death penalty. There was the, the Tory MP, Lee Anderson, who said that he thought that it should be brought back to the most heinous crimes, right? And it was weird because at that time all the liberal press were going, oh god, who thinks this? I mean, really. In the 2020s, who thinks this? I was like, quite a lot of my family. <laughs> and not even for the worst stuff, man. I'm talking the trivial, trivial shit. <laughs> True, like people parking outside of their house. <laughs> not even the drive, just a bit of stream they can see. They think if they can see it, they own it. it I don't, there's no one's ever said that to them, it's just how we think. And I look, I am not in favour of bringing back the death penalty, but I also think, hey, if we brought it back for stuff that's just annoying, <laughs> I might be into it. Like, I would bring it back. I'd consider bringing it back for people that haven't yet worked out you can pull the petrol hose over to the other side of the car. Right? <laughs> yeah? Am I getting close? Surely? Is that where your head's at? Yeah, we shoot those pricks in the face and then... <laughs> I'd bring it back for people to take far too long to locate and take their seat on a plane. I would never know what's oh, going on yeah. there. They're just like, what is... They're just like inching forward and you can see... You've got this 10F, it's 10F, I can see it over you, but it's 10F, oh, I would say a bit down there, and a bit over there, maybe. I mean, you're not stuck in a maze, why are you walking like that? <laughs> it, we're just 10F, 10 fucking F. Do you know numbers? And do you know letters? Well, put those two abilities together, take the fucking seat! <laughs> I mean, look, look, seriously, the idea that in the, in the kind of snowflake age we live in, we could just bring back the death penalty. Who's going to do it? Now, 
need it, I felt so you go, I would. <laughs> I, if I do it on a voluntary basis, Jeff, you know. But as a job, we couldn't even get people to pick strawberries for 15 quid an hour. I don't I'm gonna get fucking state-sponsored killers from. How would the advertising campaign go? How would the advertising be? Well, I was born in Sunderland, but I was... <laughs> I don't think that was to do with me, I think. Mean. <laughs> Look, I, I, I am not in favour of the death penalty, but I think that maybe, hey, maybe in the cancer culture age, maybe it'd be quite of its time, right? What could be more cancel culture than just hanging a bloke? That'd be, imagine that, you come out of the venue tonight as a geezer just swinging from the gallows, you're like, fucking hell, what did he do? Like, what did he do? He misgendered somebody on the one show. <laughs> I dare say he got off lightly, actually. <laughs> Before I go to the interval, man, I'll be talking about blokey stuff in a second half. <laughs> what a lucky you haven't already been, Jeff. Yeah. I know this is all being very feminised in general. Um, he, I've just got to confide something in you. It's that I have got no libido anymore. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for the support, lads. Um, <laughs> I'm looking around. I, I just people always pity you, but you know, on the other hand, it's quite liberating, isn't it? What's that? <laughs> keep, <laughs> keep your pecker up. <laughs> well, you say keep it up. It's even wanting it. It's, you say keep up. I'm, I just can't be asked. <laughs> you know, I just. I, but the weird thing is, is that my wife is suddenly watching all these kind of. Uh, you know, on streaming services, they've got these kind of dramas. They're very sexy, these dramas, aren't they? And always like every, there's certain kind of show where one, to, once an episode, you'll see a very athletic sex scene. And I watch it with my wife, I'm like, you can watch it, babe. But I, I ain't doing any of that. <laughs> Just so you know, I'm not doing that. I, I, ain't, I ain't lifting you up. And, and it's not because you're big. And you're not big. It, <laughs> I did, I know, I just, I just look, I mean, look at what the pressure on the knees, babe. They always fucking pick them up now. When did that become standard that the proof is worth? The bloke's got to just do a quick, swift, clean and jerk. Wait! <laughs> Steve, what would our knees be like there? We've only inject bolt rolls straight into the cartilage, haven't we? Just to keep the show on the road. And the sex always seems to end up on the work surface. I don't know what it is about the work surface that he did, but it'll be so erotic to the modern woman, you know? Is it the fact that he clears it with one reckless sweep of his arm, or, or is that the first time she's seen him help around the house? Like, <laughs> you know, while you're at it, you see that thing in the bottom step of the stairs? Um, <laughs> they always maintain eye contact during this kind of sex. The guy, like, looking straight down the barrel at the woman. <laughs> No one does that. <laughs> if you did that in normal person sex for more than two or three seconds, it would freak you both the fuck out. <laughs> it would, wouldn't it? Like, if I looked at my wife like that, she'd be like, what? She'd try and spark up a conversation. She would, she'd be like, what? What? What, Jeff? What? Like, what? Do you want a ready, Jeff? I'm like, please, I'm like, 47, babe. Of course I want a ready. That's all I want. Uh, you guys are really cool, man. We're going to have like a 20 minute interval. I'll see you in a little while. Thank you very much. Yeah.